Welcome to the latest in my monthly series of interviews with marketing leaders in which we explore their media choices and habits and their relationships with their agencies in this rapidly changing media world. I'm joined today by Dominic Groundsell, he's the marketing director of Morvan. Welcome Dominic. Uh, you had the classic marketing training, you went to Unilever, you worked on Lux and Dove and then you had marketing director roles at BT, uh, Capital One and now at More Than. And yet you now say that it's these sorts of companies, the financial companies and the telcos, who are at the cutting edge rather than FMCG. Why do you say that? Well, I, th I think first thing I'd say is I think FMCG still does fantastic marketing and you know, the, the, the industry is littered with awards that, that the likes of Coca-Cola, Unilever, P&G are still winning because they do fantastic insight and brand level mar brand le uh, marketing. I suppose where I'd say uh, financial services and telco are leading is in the digital space and in the marketing channels where they're driven by data because obviously we have a wealth of data about our customers and we're able to leverage that in a way to improve the targeting and the effectiveness of what we put into the marketplace. So how much is digital changing the marketing world? I mean, it, it's changing it hugely in, in many different ways. There's been an explosion of channels, as we're all aware. You know, five or ten years ago, it was banner ads, it was a bit of search. Now, obviously, you've got any number of different opportunities to get your brand or your sales message into market. And increasingly, using digital for things like customer relationship marketing um, through the Facebook platform and through other media channels that allow you to identify your own customers. Um, and that's very exciting because it just gives you more avenues to get your message out there. Um, for me as a marketing director, it's changing the way that I manage my team a lot because the skills and capabilities that are needed to manage in the digital environment are very different to the ones that you would, uh, I suppose, traditionally find in a business driven by brand advertising and broadcast. So how have those traditional media, the, the TV, the press and so on, how has that changed for you now? Well, I still think the old rules apply to a degree. If you're looking to drive mass reach and awareness and trying to get a, a large scale brand message across, TV still plays a, a massive role. But I think the question now for marketers is, what's the most appropriate use of the full media mix and, and the full marketing budget? Because often you would overload into broadcast channels because that's what was sexy and that was what was cool and everybody likes doing TV ads. But now increasingly you've got to think more agnostically around where is my consumer uh, what are they interested in? How do I reach them in a way that isn't necessarily just going for the jugular? And often digital offers you a way of reaching people in a more intimate and engaging way than you would traditionally do through TV. So have you any examples of the sorts of things you're doing? Um, so right now we're doing a lot of very interesting testing in the Facebook space. Facebook for me is the most exciting marketing channel that's come along in the, in the last 50 years. Um, the opportunity to speak to customers in broadcast, in a broadcast way, I reach a mass audience, but in a very tailored way, so you can almost have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It gives me a huge amounts of exciting new opportunities that didn't exist before. So, do you put your your ads on Facebook and ask people what what they think of them? I mean, there's multiple strategies we're deploying. Like many brands, we are using Facebook as a content hub. So we are, as you say, putting our ads on there and asking for comments and hoping that they get liked and, and then the effect goes viral if you want to use some of the old parlance. Um, we're also looking at ways that we can engage customers in a broader conversation through the use of content that helps add value. So we've got a program of activity called Helping Hands, which has been very successful in reaching our target market and giving them a little bit of advice, a tip bit that will help them improve their home, avoid loss, you know, avoid having to make a claim. That's been very successful. And then alongside that, we're doing a lot of the, I suppose, more direct response work that you would typically see in, in the online display world where we're putting messages on and hoping people click through to our homepage to buy our products. And what sort of budget do you put into Facebook and uh, how does that compare with the other forms of media and how is that changing? Right now, it's a relatively modest part of our budget because we're testing into it. Uh, we're obviously very heavily invested in a lot of the mainstream digital channels like search and online display, but I see Facebook growing in our future because it is multifaceted. Um, but for reference, in my last business, uh, where I was uh, running the, the credit card marketing for Capital One in the UK, Facebook went from a testing channel to being our number one digital channel in a number of months, and we were spending significant sums, often broadcast level investment, because the opportunity for volume was huge. And what about Twitter? Does that have real potential, do you think, as a, as a marketing tool? I think Twitter is potentially quite an exciting opportunity. 
but it'd be fair to say I'm not sure we're leveraging fully at the moment. We have a very strong presence in the form of our customer service team use Twitter to speak to our existing customer base, answer concerns and, and deal with any complaints that are being put through. But from a pure marketing point of view, I'm not sure we've really cracked it yet. There are opportunities to talk to our customers and talk to prospects, but I think the tonality needs to be thought through very carefully because brands need real permission to engage people on Twitter. And uh, there's a, a long list of brands who haven't done it well and I don't want to be on that list. Mm. Isn't there a danger with Facebook and Twitter and, and the other social media that actually your customers, when they get annoyed with you, can really vent, uh, vent their annoyance at you? It, it certainly does and for many organisations uh, there is an inherent risk of being present in the social sphere because you're almost asking for direct interactions for customers and those who are upset with your customer experience or have had a problem or have heard something bad about you uh, are uh, open to say whatever they like on your wall or post you know, in your Twitter feed. I think that's a risk that brands have to run. I, one of the things someone said to me once about Twitter and Facebook is there's no point hiding from the conversation because it's happening anyway. So for brands to go out and openly engage I think is the right thing to do and I think it's the brave thing to do. And I think when brands have a strategy to deal with customers, whether they're uh, happy or not, uh, through either Twitter or Facebook or in fact any social uh, platform, I think you can actually turn people around and make detractors into promoters, which is ultimately what we're looking to do on mobile. So what are you doing less of if you're doing more in Facebook and, and, and other new media? Or are you actually spending more altogether on your media? I think for us it's about rebalancing. We're certainly rebalancing away from some of the less efficient direct response marketing that we would traditionally do. Um, direct mail has been a big part of our, uh, I suppose, the history of more than in terms of the marketing mix. And whilst we're not moving away from direct mail, we're certainly looking to carve off some of the less uh, efficient parts of the direct mail schedule that we, we put out each year and focus it more into efficient media in this digital space. And with all this data that you have, I mean, is, is this big data, people talk about big data a, a lot, but does this mean mm. you know far more than you used to or actually there's so much data that it's actually hard to see the wood for the trees? I mean, I've got to be honest, I, I don't know what big data is. I hear a lot of talk about it, but I think it's just another buzzword. Essentially for me, what we've got to do is find a way to uh, link together our internal data that we have about our customers, which is profile data, demographic data, uh, and ultimately the, the data they give us to form an account with us or, or to have a policy, with the data that we have from external media partners, and also data that we can pull in from other sources like social media sentiment tracking. And that's not about using data for big brother purposes, it's not about trying to uh, have uh, some kind of nefarious watch over the customer. It's really about trying to make sure that we, we solve the problem of relevance. Often you hear from consumers that they don't mind advertising or communication as long as it's timely and relevant. And for me, data and the understanding of data is the means to do that. Because it means I can identify when to offer you a product, when to give you a service message in a channel that you're comfortable with uh, at a time of day or maybe at a period in the month that's right for you. And that means ultimately that has a better effect on you and a better effect for me. So how do you know what's actually working and what isn't working in all these uh, new areas? And can you actually be confident that you do know what really is working? Um, well, we're very lucky to have a number of um, fantastic measurement frameworks that we use on more than. Um, I have a range of different analytical techniques that are being deployed at any given time. So obviously, like many businesses who are in a direct-to-consumer play, we have linear channel analytics, which will essentially look at the purchase funnel from top to bottom in a kind of traditional from awareness through to sale standpoint, uh, which is a very uh, effective way of measuring the last click or the last call impact you're having, but is obviously not relevant if you're trying to think about the overall effect the marketing campaign in its totality have on the customer. Uh, often you won't buy just because you've got a direct mail, for instance, you'll buy because you've seen an ad, you've searched my website, and then you've seen a direct mail. And linear uh, cost per sale or linear effectiveness measurement gives you some of that view, but not all of it. So we employ econometrics. We have our own engine, uh, which is a fantastic way of measuring the overall effect of channels in relation to each other, which gives us a different view. And finally, we use a very innovative technique with a, an agency called Mesh, who have real-time brand experience tracking. So I can literally measure the effect my TV, ha my TV ad has on people when they watch it on TV in real time. 
So half of your budget isn't wasted and you, don't, and you know who it isn't wasted. Yeah, I mean, I think effectively that old, that, that old maxim is gone now. And um, whilst you can't necessarily always point to proof that everything is working, I have to show an efficiency and a, an effectiveness measure for every pound I spend. And so I, I know what all of it is doing. Um, I just can't prove necessarily the linkages between the channels yet. Um, and that's the goal of all marketers, I think. Attribution modeling and truly understanding the, the cumulative effect of the full mix. How closely do your agencies, your media agency, your creative agency and so on, how closely do they work together? And is it up to you to make sure they work well together? Well, in, in my current business, we are uh, aligned with, with two agencies and they work together principally because the, there's only two agencies and they're specialised into the creative space and in the media space. So we don't have what I know a lot of clients have, which is the bun fight and, uh, and different agencies trying to carve up the pie so that they get a bigger share, which is always very difficult. Um, in the past, I've been very lucky. At BT, I had a very large agency um, team with different agencies representing different specialisms and we were very fortunate they got on very well. Similarly, at Capital One, the same thing was true. And for me, it's less about the client being the ringmaster with a chair and a whip, if you see what I mean. It's much more around how do we contract as a group to hit the overall business objective and how do you allocate roles and responsibilities effectively at the start of the process to avoid issues in the middle of the process and at the end. What about your own media usage? What do you like watching and reading and listening to? Um, so I have quite a, an eclectic uh, um, media mix in my own life. Obviously, uh, I'm uh, very heavily invested into the whole Sky package um, because I think Sky Plus has changed my life entirely just because of the fact that I, I can now see the programmes that I want to see. Um, and that's, my, that's kind of what I spend most of my evenings doing, catching up on things that I, I miss when I'm working. And any particular sorts of programme? Um, generally, we're watching Sky Atlantic and, and uh, dramas, Luther, you know, lots of things that, that are on when I'm either looking after my baby or when <laughs> I'm on my Blackberry, so things I can't watch in real time. Um, Papers-wise, I'm mostly reading The Economist uh, or The Eye. And then uh, radio, I'm, I'm all about absolute radio. I'm a big fan of what they're doing over there. And do you have a particular message to the media owners, one thing that bugs you or you'd really like them to, uh, to improve to make things better for you as a client? I don't, I don't think it's something that bugs me. I think what I'm seeing increasingly, which I'm welcoming, is a desire for media owners to get closer to client businesses and not to be intermediated by the media agencies. I think there's definitely a role for the media agencies to help facilitate conversations with media owners, but I certainly am a big advocate of having direct relationships, business plans, you know, strategy days, because those guys know their platforms better than we do, and, I, and in many cases better than the media agencies. And if you give them a business problem, they often come back with much better solutions than if, I suppose, you get an aggregated view from your media agency. Dominic Grantel, thanks very much. Thank you very much.